Hi everyone, it's Justine here from House of Mahalo. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Um, so I'm here to do a little bit more work in my Shades of Winter journal. Um, this will probably be the last video that you'll see before the flip through. Um, but I, yeah, I wanted to pop on the camera um, because I have a little bit of a dilemma. Um, but I have a plan about it and I, I thought, you know, this might be useful for some of you. Um, so I've got my book plate on. Now, because I went ahead and made the cover and I, I thought I was going to have a topper on the front, wasn't I, if you remember me making this, um, and I decided about the book plate later on. So I've got the book plate on there, but of course, um, as we knew was going to happen, um, I now have, um, let me just move the tassel out of the way, I've, um, I've popped the tassel on a handheld fan, which I'll talk to you about in a uh, later on. Uh, for now... Um, I just want to talk through what I'm going to do today. So, um, as you can see, the brad legs um, have come through. Now, I'm using small brads, so they are, you know, they're tiny, but they're there. They're very noticeably there. What I also noticed um, when I was um, binding the journal in was um, this scrapbook paper. I didn't notice at the time because it blends in very well with the white poinsettia and the snow. But there's actually a um, like a mark just here where I think, um, you know, when you take uh, paper off of a paper pad, sometimes you can like get um, a slight tear in it or um, the, some of the print comes off. Um, so that's sort of showing through. Um, but here's my dilemma. I don't want to cover the front. Um, I obviously purposefully picked this um, this particular scrapbook paper to go with this beautiful horse. I wanted to use this um, and I don't want to cover it up. Now there are lots of things that I could have done so I could have had you know a pocket or a flip or something in the front but I just I really don't want to cover this um, but of course I have to find a way to hide those brad legs. Every time I say that I try and say bird legs which is not um, not what they are they are brad legs um, and of course I have to hide this so I do have to come up with a solution. Um, and yeah, I thought I would just pop the camera on and show you what it is that I'm going to do. So, um, I think I mentioned in the last video, I've got this frame. Um, it just came in a pack of things from my stepmom, And it just about covers uh, the legs and also that mark at the bottom of the paper. Um, now, I want it to slip in because I kind of want it to be like um, almost like a feature of the paper um, rather than just something that I've added in. Okay now it's got a little bit showing of the brad leg. Um, I'm gonna have to just call it brad because I really want to say bird legs. Um, and that's about as far down as I can get the frame to go. Straight. Well, I suppose it could go like that. It's because my, my stitching isn't straight so um, I could always put something there. Anyway, um, but of course, you know, um, that looks very pretty. And I was playing around with some poinsettia fussy cuts from the paper pad. Um, and uh, I figured out a way to position them just to make them a, a decorative element, really. Um, so I'll just show you. And then I'll show you where the dilemma starts. <laughs> uh, that one there. Pretty, right? Very, very pretty and sort of blends in and does make it look very much like the um, part of the journal. But here is my dilemma. It's not a, it's not functional. It's there just purely for looks. And although I'm okay with that, I'm not ecstatic. So I need to find a way to um, use this frame and use this kind of layout. But in a more functional, practical way. And here's what I was thinking. So I've got some scraps left over and I've just been playing around with, um, I'll just move that out of the way for a second. I've just been playing around with whether I could make some kind of hidden pocket by um, slipping this in and, is that the right way around? No, that's the wrong way around. <laughs> Try again. Um, slipping it in um, and matching it up with the print, sorry if I just move that, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error to get it in the right place, but um, 
if I match it up like that, we could have um, a hidden pocket. So I can put something in there, but of course if we decide we don't want anything in the pocket and we just simply want, um, you know, want it to be decorative, then you take them out and when that's all glued down, I mean you can see that there's a pocket, but it's not as noticeable. Um, and then I've also got, because it, it's not long enough, I've also got another strip to make a small pocket in the front. Just make sure. Yep, I'm just about on frame. Sorry about the how dark it is today. It's another dreary. <laughs> it's a frosty morning, um, but it's uh, it's very dark out. Um, so something like that. They're not quite in the right place, but something like that. And if we put the um, the poinsettia back. Now, obviously it will be in the way of this front pocket a little bit, but I'm only going to put in some little, um, some little like stickers or just little pieces from the kit that I've not used. This one's like a snowy mountain. Um, so I just want to see how it would look really before going for it. <laughs> so imagine, you know, little pieces like that are in there. Um, and I wanted to use this shaker tag um, and I'm thinking potentially that be in the front. Now funnily enough I'm looking at it now and I like the idea of the hidden pocket but to be honest I think I preferred it with the frame um, which is frustrating because um, obviously it then doesn't have any functional use. It's just simply there to um, to cover up those those issues that I mentioned. Um, I mean, is that a bad thing if it was just like I've honestly I've been I've been putting this off because I've been umming and ahhing and toing and froing for. A, a good week or so with what I'm going to do about it because there's lots of different things I could have done. As I said, I could have done a pocket or a flip or some kind. I could have done some stuff with vellum to, um, uh, you know, to, to still have the frame and everything, but, um, you know, turn it into a pocket and stuff. But I just, um, there's just something about it that I'm just, it's telling me to actually go on the more simple sort of thing because I again it just doesn't it look so beautiful and I mean, again you know the colours are not quite picking it up but um you know in the flesh it just looks very much like that sort of just how it is and hmm it's the dilemma really isn't it do I go with the hidden pocket idea um I wonder, so all I need to hide, so the brad, the brads are already hidden by the frame and I've just got this little mark down here. So what if we had just the one smaller pocket? Let's see what that looks like just on its own. So be somewhere about there. Again, we need to, um, we need to position it correctly. And if I put the poinsettia back on, because I did like how that, that looks. Kind of like that. Now, that's a little bit less in your face, isn't it? Yes. And then we can still have my beautiful snowflake um, shaker. And actually, that is now, it's almost framed in the, <laughs> framed in the frame, isn't it? I wonder whether we should do that, you know. Yes, I think I'll go with that. Um, because, and as I say, once you take the shaker out... Because um, I would like to put a bookmaker's note in there as well, but I could put that somewhere else. It's, it doesn't have to be in the front. Um, and um, yeah, if you once you take it out, it's very you, you really don't see very much of that little pocket in the front, do you? Especially with the poinsettia half over it. But if you want there to be a pocket, there is one. Okay. Whew. Okay, we have made a decision. <laughs> as I say, I've been you know. Uh, umming and ahhing about this for such a long time um, or what feels like a long time, it hasn't really been that long but it, it's felt like a long time 
um, because I didn't want to rush into a decision that I wasn't going to be happy with. So we want you to be there. Um, my next thing is how on earth do I attach it in the right place? Obviously, we need it to be a pocket. So I think what I'm best doing, because we know it fits within the frame, I think I'm best positioning that first. So I'm just going to make sure I've got it the right way. I think it's that way. Um, just glue the pocket. Um, I'm not. I'm using Fabri-Tac because I trust it a little bit more. Um, but... Uh, a lot of this is covered by the frame, so if it does gloop out a little bit, it's not um, it's not going to be the end of the world. But I need to make sure that I'm positioning it right. So <laughs> I'm just going to go for it and pray <laughs> that we get it in the right place. Okay, I'm positioning. Okay, I think we're good. Just checking what I can see. Yep. Okay. So I did get a little bit of glue pitch, but nothing a tissue will not fix. And as I say, that should, fingers crossed, we'll have a frame there. But if not, um, the uh, we can always add more decoration and stuff. I just, um, yeah, it's been really, really bugging me <laughs> not to just get on with it. Um, because, you know, I really want to... Um, I really want to get this one finished <laughs> soon because obviously I still, you know, I want it to be winter. So let me just check um, that we still have a pocket in there. Yep. Probably just needs a little bit of time to dry, but there we go. Okay. Step one, complete. Or step two, because I had to make a decision. <laughs> Actually, that was step one. Right. Step two is the frame which is going to be tricky because as I say, I want it to sort of blend in, which is why I'm slipping it under these laces. Um, and I wanted to wait until the journal was bound in before doing this because I didn't know how bulky the journal was gonna be. Ooh, that's why I glued that bit of lace down, there we go. Um, yeah, I didn't know how, how chunky the journal was gonna be. So I wanted to wait and um, you know, until it was all bound in and then I could ex actually see exactly what I'm working with and all the rest of it. Right, so it's going to be a little bit tricky to meander that in, but we're just going to have to hold our breath and go for it, I think. Um, to be honest. <laughs> because, yeah, it's... Um, just going to go for it. Okay, right. Wish me luck. <laughs> and this is where I go very quiet because I'm absolutely going to need to concentrate. Um, so yeah, I'm using the Fabri-Tac uh, just all over. Um, partly, oh, Ben will do it on the page. Uh, partly because it's going over the, the brads. Um, but I'm being very conscious not to go too close to the middle because I really, really don't want this to gloop out everywhere. Okay, here we go. Right. Um, I think I'm best slipping it under this one first. I really wish I had another pair of hands for this. Okay. Just getting it down there. Okay. I'm just going to slip it under. Sorry if I'm talking really quietly. Honestly, I was absolutely just holding my breath just then. <laughs> Still am. Okay. Sorry if my elbows are all in it, but all you can see is I'm just simply trying to pop it under this trim. Uh, what if we get this out? Oops. Okay. <clears throat> right, have we stuck down? Need to move it over just a tad, but I might have taken a bit too long. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's moving ever so slightly. Whew. 
Okay, right. I really hope you can see all that. <laughs> okay, right, just press it down. To be fair, you know, if it's not like glued 100%, I'm not worried about it because it's under the laces. So in that respect, it's, you know, it's pretty well covered, isn't it? Um, you know, somebody is not going to want to just poke this out. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it, took me, oh, it took me all my breath in the world to uh, get that under there. Okay. Yep. There we go. I've positioned it so that the so the brads are covered. Um. Obviously, we've got the uh, um that the mark down here is, is almost completely gone. There is a slight little bit just there where maybe I could have done with this being a little bit higher. But I'm hoping if I can position this, it that little mark, tiniest little mark, which is really not noticeable, is actually going to be hidden by that leaf anyway. Whew. Can I breathe now? <laughs> Were you holding your breath just as much as me? I'm so sorry if that was like not a relaxing crafting just then. Um, but I, I wanted to show you because I'm sure... It, this is not going to be the last time that I do a book plate in hindsight. It's just not. Um, and, you know, I'm sure lots of us make... Um, it's not an error. It's just a... Um, it's that lack of hindsight of just, oh, yeah, I was going to put a book plate on it. Or changing your mind like I did. Oh, right, yes, I don't want to cut a, a topper on it anymore. And I could have just glued the book plate to the front and saved myself a lot of stress. Um, but... I don't like to do that myself because I'm not so sure about my gluing skills just yet. Um, there's no way that I'm using a hot glue gun on a book plate. It's just too small a surface, just all that sort of stuff. Whereas with a brad, it's now definitely in there. It's not coming off. Um, but we are going to, um, yeah, just <laughs> make it a piece, a statement piece in the front. So I hope that was um, helpful. So I'm just going to get these glued down now. Um, now stick around because I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit of the inside of the journal. Um, not as a flip through, just as it. I've made some changes. Um, I, I don't think we can be uh, surprised by that really. I have made changes. Um, but it was only because I came to bind the journal in. I put all the pieces in that I wanted to have. And it just chunked up way too much m just more than I wanted um and it wouldn't have been a problem I could have just gone with it um you know there's nothing wrong with a a chunky journal um now I have to be careful I've put too much glue on those so I just want to make sure um I don't want to glue the actual pocket shut do I <laughs> I'm just just going to pop that there um just to yeah just to protect the pocket anywho um yeah i always forget about that one day i'll learn <laughs> uh but yes anyway um yeah i came to bind the journal in and it was just um i didn't want it to be this chunky chunky um yeah i just didn't want it to be really chunky um and uh so yeah so i've had to take out some pages um but you know I've got plans for everything um it's just yeah I've had to make a, a couple of changes so excuse me whilst I just glue this down um I appreciate you probably I'm pulling everything to me again it's it's minus two degrees this morning uh, that's in celsius I don't know what it is in fahrenheit I'm afraid um but that is below freezing um which yeah in the minus today <laughs> so very very cold right so I think we had this about there and again I'm tucking them under the um, the trim because I just want this to be very much like um, almost like the frame was already decorated like I want everything to just blend in and not be this really obvious thing that I've tried to um, you know type thing so is that all right now 
The pocket's fine, I just want to leave that to dry for a little bit. Um, I think we're good. I can't see any glue seepage. It's not to say there isn't any, it's just I can't see any right this moment, apart from just, just there. Um, the only reason I used the Fabri-Tac for that is because I was gluing partly onto, onto lace. Um, I don't really like to use the... Well, it's Beacon, it's like Fabri-Tac, but yeah, I don't really like to use it for small pieces because it gloops out and gives you this little shiny, shiny errors, but um, it is what it is. Whew. I feel like I need to lie down, it is... <laughs> It's nine o'clock in the morning and I need to lie down already. But I'm glad that I have done that now. Um, it's one of those things, we put off um, doing these things because we don't want to, we don't want to get it wrong and it's a bit daunting and all the rest of it, but yeah, pretty right? So when that's dry, I'm not going to leave that in there just yet, I um, just want that to dry a bit, so I'm going to pop this back in just to be sure that I'm not going to glue the pocket shut. Um, and that will just be a really nice statement piece. Um, yeah. Whew, okay. So, uh, whilst I'm here, um, that was really all I was going to show you today because um, quite a lot of the journal is now sort of done. So, I I was just going to give you, um, not a flip through, but just a, um, a heads up to where I'm at, really. Because I suspect the next video you see uh, will be a flip through. Um, but that will probably be next week now. Um, I was hoping to get it finished this week, uh, this weekend, but I'm actually waiting on some uh, silver eyelash trim. Uh, no, white eyelash trim. It's got sparkly silver bits in it. Uh, I hoped that would come this week, but it hasn't, so um, I'm hoping that will come next week now. Um, and then I can go through and add that to the tags and stuff. Um, I also want to do a little bit of stickles, because I bought some uh, diamond stickles. Anyway, so I'll just give you a click a quick look at the journal so far. So all bound in, you've just seen me do the frame and um, obviously the book plate is in the middle, uh, on the front. Gosh, give me a second. I feel like I need to just go take a breather. Whew, okay. Um, yeah, I've attached the tassel to um, a piece of fan. As I said, this was mine. Um, uh, the whole fan was broken. I had it in my memory box, um, you know, all the pieces of it because it was sentimental to me. And um, this was, uh, this is actually my <laughs> very first souvenir from overseas travels. Uh, when I was six years old, we went off to Venice and Florence and a few places in Italy. Um, and yeah, I loved the fan, especially with this gold. Um, but yeah, this idea comes from Natasha from Treasure Books. Um, so I've attached that. Um, it's just with a bulb pin. So if the person decides that that's not working for them, um, they can just take it off and uh, maybe paper clip the tassel onto the front and um, the, the decision's really theirs but you know it's a that's how we're doing that um so I've got some vintage trim down the front there I want to put um something down here but I want to wait for the eyelash trim because of what I'd like to do um inspired by Tanya from Teddy Treasure um she does uh lacy decoration for the sides of pages where she's got like lace and eyelash trim and little um fussy cuts or die cuts or something that's what I'd like to do um, but of course I have to wait for the, the eyelash trim, so that'll be that. Um, I've got this cluster here. Um, I've got this tag, which I just made quickly last night, um, out of some scrapbook paper, did some stenciling. Um, you can write, you can actually write there and on the back. Um, I'm trying very hard not for this to be a complete flip through. Some lace there, there's that little bunny uh, flip out you saw me make. Um, I've just added this puff in and I've attached the pocket with just this cardstock. I would have done these things on camera, but it's really hard to know, um, some stenciling, it's really hard to know how much it, you, you want to see. Um, I'm still new to doing journals on camera, so um, just bear with me as I figure it out, really. Um, this is a tip-in. Um, so... A tip-in, if you've never heard of it, is when you put um, an envelope into the journal and um, if you put it in sideways, you can bind the envelope in with the flap on the other side. But of course, then you've got an envelope flap. Well, what are you going to do with it? Um, you can create a tip-in 
Now I didn't do this on camera because it's actually my first time doing a tip-in, um, but Denise from Denise Junk Journals UK has some really good videos on her doing this like all the time. She does it a lot. Um, so I just followed her videos um, to see what I need to, needed to do. Um, so we've got this pretty uh, image here. Um, this came from an art sample I received in the post um, and I just thought it went perfectly with the uh, snowy scene. Um, and on the back, I've made this sort of like hidden hidden um, journaling spot. Um, I thought about putting a tab on here, but um, I kind of like the idea that if you just turn it over, it just looks pretty and only you will know that there's something to lift up. That was kind of my, my thinking, I guess. Just pocket and a cluster there. Here's the middle. Um, I think you've seen that already. Um, and I've just slipped in uh, a piece of note paper. So you might recognise this page um, with this fox on. Um, I didn't want the bunny to be on top of the fox because it kind of felt like when I was turning it over um, that the fox was after the bunny, which is a bit like, I don't, <laughs> I didn't want that kind of sentiment. So um, I've just put popped it in as note paper um, if the person chooses to use it but of course they could put something else in there if they want to. It's a bit of a, a snug fit but it does um, it does go in. I popped the bow on that I think I mentioned before. Cluster tuck here um, and I still need to back cards and things but you know I'll get to it. <laughs> and then uh, I just made this last night. Um, I would have done this on camera, I really wish that I had, but it was one of those things where you just start playing with paper um, at, you know, 10 o'clock at night or something, and before I knew it, it turned into this gorgeous, gorgeous tag. So, um, it was the uh, the plain sort of music, I say plain, it's still beautiful, but uh, it didn't have anything on it, and I was sort of trying to find some kind of focal point, um, and it's quite a long tag, so my struggle was that I didn't have any, like, long, tall trees or really anything that would take up the space that it needed so I just started layering up some pieces like some there's a scrap of the wallpaper um I've got this little frame some organzas die cuts and then of course um I'm not sure what bird this is but it did come from a book where um I think it was the same page that the puffin was on so um they they, they make me think of like Iceland and up north in the highlands in Scotland type of areas so I hope that it's fitting for the icy scenes. Um, another cluster there, um, you saw that already but I've just popped in this uh, journal card made from a Christmas card and I've just popped in that. I think I did that on video uh, but I've done the stitching so um, that might be different. <clears throat> Still need to attach this but I want to do some stenciling on it and then this will be um, a little piece that flips out to the side. Um, but yeah, I want to stencil front and back. Um, little tuck space. Um, that's still the same tag, just with the horse. Little cluster down there. Um, and then I still need to put something in there, uh, which is probably going to be this journal card. Um, it came, comes from the kit and I've just backed it onto really pretty pearlescent white paper um, so I think I'll probably have that in there and then of course you saw me do that in the last video um, so let's just see how we're doing I think we should be dry now um, I will get to something in a second um, because you might have noticed from that mini flip through that the uh, beautiful heat embossing page is not in there um, now I'm going to take that lace off the top because when my white eyelash trim comes I'm going to use that instead so it's less bulky. Um, take that off and I'll just pop the charm there just for a second. Um, yeah, just reduce a bit of the bulk, have a bit of eyelash trim coming up instead. Um, yeah, you might have noticed that the, um, the heat embossing page is not in there. Um, the only reason is because the journal was getting, I mean, look, <laughs> it's getting so chunky. Um, so I had to make some decisions over stuff to take out. So I took out um, a music page that I had in there, um, the Foxy page, um, and the 
heat embossed envelope. It was just chunking it up too much. Um, but don't be sorry, my hard work has not gone to waste because um, I'm basically um, making this into, I guess, um, something of a little like journal set. Um, so I've turned the, um, or I'm turning, I haven't done it yet, but I'm basically uh, making my, my heat embossed page into a little like uh, folio notebook. So um, you've still got the pockets in there as you saw me do. Um, with the uh, with the journal cards, um, but instead I'm going to put some pages in here, uh, stitch them in, um, and then this is just going to be this little like um, folio notebook thing. Um, I've just added this altered paper clip, an infinite grace um, that comes from a poem about winter, um, and then I've just started making this um, little like folio pocket thing um, which I'm just going to use to pop in a few pieces that um, I haven't used in the journal that I thought I might just like extra journal cards which um, I will back stickers just little things like that really um, is is what will be in there um, and and then obviously the journal cards that I made on the very first um, video for the journal um, and then, yeah, I've just got this envelope. Um, this is a, a freebie from G. Kerr, who, um, it's the same, she made a, a bunch of things that kind of go together, so I, I've used some of her freebies as well, just with some vintage trim on the top. Um, and then I've just popped in some bits and pieces, um, which are not finished, but they're just going to be extra journal cards and little things like that. Um, and what else? Just trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you at this point. I have got this vellum envelope which um, I was using to pop in little pieces. Again, those are those stickers. Um, because they're not going in the front now, I think I will uh, pop them in this little envelope um, which I just stitched with some blue thread to make sure it's definitely uh, closed up. I didn't trust my glue. <laughs> Um, and uh, maybe we just pop this uh, this little paper clip on there. Um, is there somewhere I can put that? I mean, I could clip it into the journal, but um, I don't know. What's the wrong way around? <laughs> wrong way around. God, I really do need to go have a little <laughs> a little lie down. Um, is there somewhere I can clip that in there? I could just tuck it in rather than clip it. Hang on. Um, I could just do that, maybe. Yeah, I mean that's going with the with the journal. It's, yeah, as I say, it's sort of turned into this little like little set, I suppose. Um, right. So I will leave it there. Um, short but sweet video today. Um, just I, yeah, I just wanted to share what I was doing with the book plate. Um, did I already tell you what word I'm going to put in there? I think I did. If I didn't, I'm probably going to go with um, enchanting or, or something like that. Um, and uh, and then the next time you see this, um, maybe maybe next weekend, um, a week from now or so, um, it will be a uh, it will be the flip through um, because I just got like little bits left to do, like um, you know some stenciling and just little things like that really um so yeah i uh, <laughs> oh yes really do need to light down now um so yeah i i hope you like how it's coming along nearly done um and yeah i'll be back with the flip through soon um in the meantime don't worry i will not disappear on you um in the meantime we're going to be going well we've still got the finish up challenge going on um i think we've got couple more weeks to go um and then um uh i'll be starting a new winter journal um it will be different again um and it will be a, a pink winter journal so i hope you i hope you'll stick around to see that as well as always thanks so much for joining me today i really do need to just go have a lie down and a whew, breathe sorry if that video was a bit you could probably sense 
the the nerve wrackingness but I just wanted to to show you that because um it's not going to be the last time that I do a book plate last I'm sure I'm not the only one who has done that um or will continue to do it I'm sure you know it, it's going to happen to me again um so I just wanted to show you um a different option because yeah you could add a pocket in the front you could have a flip out you could have you could just cover it up with some writing space there's lots of things you could do um but what if you don't want to cover the paper? Well, you can, of course, as we have just seen, um, you can instead, just move that out of the way, uh, you can instead make a little bit of a, a statement piece in the front. And of course, when you take it out, can you see the pocket? Kind of. Just about. Just about there. But it's it's not really there. It's hiding. It's hidden. Okay, right, I'm going. See you later. Bye.